Hey guys, it's Eric Barstow, and this is the third video in a series of three for February, which is all about laying a foundation for your painting business for the year to hit your goals and make a lot of money and grow your business and really create the life you want. And so video number one, we talked about how do you set your goals and make your plan for the year. If you missed that, uh, go back and, and watch that video. Second video, we talked about the importance of marketing and getting your you know, estimate numbers being hit. Ultimately, if you don't hit your estimate goals in your marketing, you can't hit all your other goals. So that's what we covered in the first two videos. So if you missed those, you can go back and watch those. This video, uh, we're gonna talk about the things that get in people's way of hitting goals. This is just some of the stuff that almost universally I've seen people struggle with over the last 14 years of coaching people running a painting company. And this isn't specific to the painting business. This is just specific to hitting business goals in general. And this is all stuff I've run into for years. I've seen my business partners run into, my team members run into, people I coach your painting business pro and consult, uh, you know, people who are acquaintances and are just in the industry with me. This is the kind of stuff that almost universally gets in the way of people hitting their goals. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So let's dive into that. So the first thing is anybody can make a good plan. Anyone can sit down and set a goal and make a plan to hit that goal. Just like anyone can make a plan to climb Mount Everest. Not everyone can or will actually climb Mount Everest, but anybody could make the plan. Anybody can make a plan to run a million dollar company. And I've seen a lot of people make that plan. Doing it is a totally different animal. So that's what we wanna talk about here. So the first thing I wanna just address is some of the most common things that get in the way of hitting your goals. So the first thing is excuses, plain and simple. An excuse is just any explanation you have for why you aren't hitting your goals. Anything, if you're not hitting your goals, anything that comes out of your mouth that doesn't start with I is an excuse. You know, and by I, I mean not like I think my market sucks. No, I'm talking like I didn't do this. I did this. I, it, look, it's all on you. Someone else has done it, so you can do it. And even if someone hasn't yet done it, doesn't mean it can't be done. You got to take personal accountability. Any excuse, any reason you're using to explain why you're not hitting your goals, virtually guarantees you won't hit your goals. If you don't hit your sales targets and you say, well, I just am in a bad market and everybody else is just low ballers, so I can't win any jobs because of price. Okay, great. You're screwed. You are not going to ever hit your goals as long as you believe that. So you got to really catch yourself with excuses. There's just, you know, excuses make us feel good. They get you off the hook. It's not my fault. I don't need to take any blame. All that kind of stuff. It makes you feel good. But ultimately, you've either got your goals or you don't and I'm only interested in having my goals, the excuse doesn't do anything for me because now I just don't have my goals and I've got this nice little explanation for why I don't, but I still have my goals. That's really what I care about. So excuse is a huge thing. You really got to catch yourself with that. Um, look, you got, the, you got the results or you don't. And if you don't, you've got to get hurry up and get the results. So the next thing that happens is self-deception. All right, so I see a lot of people deceiving themselves that they're somehow going to hit their goals even though I'm way behind right now. All right, so you can't get caught up deceiving yourself about where you're at, which kind of comes with this, which is optimism. So I see a lot of people just being really optimistic about hitting their goals. And what that usually looks like is I'll catch up later. Okay, so I have people who, and I've done this, I'm guilty of this, but if my target is to do 10 estimates a week and four weeks in a row, I do seven, it's really easy to be like, oh, well, that's, you know, I'm only 12 estimates behind. I only need to do one more than my goal next month and I'll, and I'll, or the next few months and I'll catch up. So there's this, this lie we tell ourselves if we're behind on our goals that like, oh, it's going to be okay. Like I'll catch up with it later. I just need to do better later. And it's just, it never works that way. It almost never works that way. All right. So we're going to get to what you should do when you're behind your targets, but you can't get caught up in the, I'll catch up with my goals later. I'll make up for that next week. You know, I see people do that all the time as an excuse to not do the work now or a way to make yourself feel better or something. So you've got to really make sure that you didn't get caught in any of this stuff. 
What gets in the way is you're making excuses for why you're not hitting goals. You're saying we'll do it later. You're just being overly optimistic. That's just the biggest mistake. You've got to have, if this stuff isn't there, if you're not making excuses, if we're not doing any of that, all we're doing is being ruthlessly focused. Ruthlessly focused on our targets. Every single week, every single day. Like I need to hit my company's estimate targets yesterday. And that's the attitude I have every single day, day in and day out until we're hitting those targets. I'm talking to my office manager, my marketing manager on a daily basis, twice a day, morning and evening. How many do we have set for next week? What's our target by the end of the day? Did we hit the target? We didn't hit the target. What are we going to do differently to hit targets tomorrow? And every single day we're talking twice a day until we hit these targets. And by the way, we're, we're very close to hitting our targets. We just have a little bit too much of a cancellation rate that's happening. And so even with this level of focus, it's still not always easy to hit your targets. But if you don't have that kind of focus and you're not hitting your targets, you're on a trajectory to just not hit your targets. And if you don't hit your estimate targets, you're not going to hit your sales targets, you're not going to hit your revenue targets, you're not going to hit your profit targets. And there's nothing wrong with that because you'll probably still be able to grow, but you're not going to hit your goals. So you got to be really ruthlessly focused day in, day out on the numbers and that's it. So for me, there's just the numbers I'm hitting or I'm not hitting. If I'm not hitting them, I've got to take actions until I'm hitting them. That's it. That's the whole story. All right. And we've got to have some serious urgency and not fall into this trap that I have later. There is no later. If I can't hit my goals this week, what makes me think I can hit them next week? That's crazy. That's crazy talk to think, oh, I haven't hit my goals four weeks in a row. So in two months, I'll just exceed them. It's like, no, you go, you got to freak out that like, oh my God, I'm not hitting my goals. It's predictable. I'm not going to hit my goals all year. I've got to change stuff. I've got to figure out how to hit my goal first before I can even think about exceeding them. And if you have that kind of focus, you're going to be way more likely to go and hit your targets. Next thing is you've got to constantly be checking in to know what you need to be focused on. So what we do for this, and this is on the goal setting worksheet that was sent out in the first video, but you should be updating your goals every week. You should know every single week how many leads I was supposed to get, how many I got, how many estimates I was supposed to do, how many I did, how many jobs I was supposed to book, how many I booked, how much revenue I was supposed to sell, how much I sold. You should know every single week and you've got to play every single week to make those numbers match. So you've got to update your numbers every week so you know where you're at and that's what's going to guide your actions. See, most people don't take actions based on their goals and where they're supposed to be like that. Most people wake up and react. They go off how they feel. They go off their emotion and they react to their business and they set a goal. They make a plan, but then they just kind of do what they were going to do anyways. No, like I need, my actions are guided by what, what numbers I need to hit period. Okay, so now we've got all that stuff covered. Now the next thing is uh, pers about personal accountability. Now, running a business is a wonderful thing. One of the biggest challenges I see with running a business is you don't have anybody who's your boss. You don't have anybody making sure you do what you're supposed to do. And a lot of business owners uh, don't do what they're supposed to do. And I'm guilty of this too. You know, this is one of the toughest things is that personal accountability. So every single week I've got a bunch of stuff planned to do. And last, you know, last couple weeks was a great example. I never miss a meeting. I never drop the ball on something I tell someone I'm going to do. I don't do those things, but there was a bunch of stuff that I didn't tell anybody I was going to do. I just knew I had to do, you know, I was supposed to develop this cross department training system for our company. I'm supposed to get it done in the next two months, but last week was the week I was planning on doing it. I'm supposed to write some new emails, I'm supposed to do this. Uh, other project, all three of these projects were just stuff I knew to do. Nobody else knew I was doing them. I pushed all three of those back a week. You know, I kind of got lazy one day. I didn't feel like doing it and I ended up pushing it all back. If you don't tell people what you're going to do and you're the only person who knows, you can blow stuff off and there's no real accountability. So you want to make your goals known. So the first thing you can do is just make your goals known. Let your team know what your goals are. Let your wife or husband or significant other know what your goals are. Let your friends know what your goals are and let people every week know what you're going to do this week. 
if you just have the discipline on Monday to tell some, tell a few people, hey, I just, you don't, I don't even care if you listen to this, believe it, this, this is what I'm going to do this week. Hey, this is what I'm going to do this week. Hey, this is what I'm going to do this week. You are more likely to do it. You know, I have, I have a personal health coach where I, I literally just report to him every day. This is what I ate. This is what I did for exercise. Last night, uh, some Girl Scouts came by my house and I bought five boxes of cookies because, of course, you've got to buy you know, cookies from the Girl Scouts. And I wanted, if I didn't have a coach, I maybe would have eaten an entire box of Girl Scout cookies. But I didn't want to tell my coach that I ate an entire box of Girl Scout cookies, so I didn't eat any. Now, if I didn't have anyone I had to tell that to, if I was alone in my own little bubble and world, I'd just eat all those Girl Scout cookies. All right, it's got the same thing with your business. You don't want to draw it, fall into temptations to be lazy or not hit your goals. Make them public, and it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow through on what your plans are. The other thing that I strongly recommend, I'm a huge fan of, is communities, coaches, support, accountability. Um, I think that there's, there, if you're an entrepreneur and you're not involved in some community or support group or mastermind group or whatever you want to call it, you know, I'm actually in two right now looking at a third, one's for trades and specifically, one is more for just business in general. So these are two separate groups that I'm a part of. I've had a personal coach for the last four years. I've got a health coach. I've got another group I'm joining around finance and that kind of stuff just from my own personal finances. Go and seek out support. You know, my health coach, I'm better because I have a coach. You know, when you've got someone holding you accountable as an entrepreneur or you've got a community and you've got, not only do you have the accountability and the support, but you've also got the motivation and inspiration, seeing other people do it, knowing you're not alone. All right, so there's a few resources I recommend. Now, if you're in the you know, zero to $750,000 a year group of painting contractors. There's two places I, I think you can check out. Of course, you can join the free forums, but you have no idea who's posting there. And you don't want to take advice from some guy without knowing his business, knowing his success, right? And there's a lot of people out there that I see giving estimate advice. I kind of want to know how good their business is before I take their advice. You know, if it's some guy who's been, who hasn't grown his business in 15 years, and he's not making very good money. I don't know if I want to take that guy's advice. So I'd be careful with the, the public stuff. But there are some curated groups. So one of them is uh, called DYB Coach. And I'll put the link below the video. But DYB Coach, it's pretty inexpensive. It's 30 to 40 I think it's $40 a month, $39 a month, something like that. And you've got an amazing group, support, accountability, and some really great resources. That's an awesome place to look if you aren't in some type of community. Another one is, of course, our Painting Business Pro community. Um, so for that one, it's a one-time fee to, to buy the training course and you join the community. We have about 550 members in the group. Everyone's following the same advice, doing the same stuff and really kicking ass. It's an awesome community where you get a lot of support and you can go to when questions and stuff pop up. The last one is if you're, as my friends over at Breakthrough Academy, so if you have a $750,000 business or bigger, you need something more personal. You want actually a coach working on your business with you, not more of a, a general community. Um, when you've got a smaller than $750,000 business, there's not enough money in your business usually to pay for the personal stuff. It's not economical to hire a personal coach or work with some of the higher level consulting. Once you're at 750,000 above, it is economical to do that. Not as economical, but it's, I think, a, net, a necessity. Um, I've been a member of, of Breakthrough Academy. That's one of the groups I'm talking about, and I'm joining them again because of the things we're doing in our business. Like, I need that extra support and that extra help for what we're doing, not just from the coaches, but from the community. So I'll leave links to all of those things below. And whatever you do, just be aware of this stuff we talked about above. Make sure you're focused really ruthlessly on your goals. You've got to hit them every week. If you don't... If you don't hit a goal in a week, you've got to do way more effort the next week. Don't lie to yourself and make sure that you're constantly updating your numbers and making adjustments. Um, and that's really how we can set a good foundation for the year, focus heavily on marketing because that's where it starts. And then this is how we keep ourselves really on track. So I hope you took a couple things out of this video that you can see in yourself, you can implement in your own business that will help you hit your goals. Next month in March, we're gonna have a whole new theme. We'll be releasing videos every Thursday, same time, as well as sending out some emails and uh, putting out some good resources. So don't miss any of the updates by subscribing below and hitting the little bell next to it to make sure you get notified when we put out new videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those below. I read and respond to all of them myself. And uh, really looking forward to doing these videos this year. And if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. So 
Um, I hope this was useful and we'll see you again soon.